chapter 1. Let's start with verse 26. It'll be up on the board. There's three things that God is redeeming. One is our spirit. Our spirit man has to be redeemed. For when Adam fell, then our spirit became absolutely dark and had no fellowship with God whatsoever. So our spirit man has to be born again, become a new creation. And that's what has happened to us so far. The second thing that will be redeemed will be our bodies. We know that that will happen at the resurrection. And the third thing that will be redeemed will be this earth. Right now, this earth really is under the authority of the God of this world, who is Satan. And this is why the earth has to be redeemed. But let's start reading here. Verse 26, we're up there, very good. And God said, let us, that is, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, make man, con, in our image, after our likeness, and let them have complete authority, notice this, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame, the beasts, over all the earth. Notice, over all the earth. Now, when Adam sinned, he lost that authority over all the earth. That's why the earth has to be redeemed. That's why when Jesus comes back and he lands on Mount Olive, he will be redeeming this earth back to himself. In the meantime, we have to occupy until he comes. It says, over everything that creeps upon the earth. Verse 27. Verse 27. <clears throat> And God created man in his own image, in the image and likeness of God. He created him, male and female. He created them. Verse 28, and God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living creature that moves upon the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every plant, talking to man now, yielding seed that is on the face of all the land, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to all the animals and on the earth, on the earth and every bird of the air, verse 30, and to everything that creeps on the ground, to everything which there is, the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw, verse 31, everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, suitable, pleasant, and he approved it completely. And there was evening, and there was morning, a sixth day. So when God created man, God created man to take charge of the earth, and he actually gave the earth to man, which I will show you in just a little bit in the scriptures. But when man sinned, that is Adam sinned, then man lost the earth. His spirit died towards God. He lost his fellowship. And so God is in the process now of redeeming. I want you to put Romans 5.17 up there, and we're going to get started on this message. Romans 5, 17. Put it to King James, if you don't mind. King James, on it's much more clear. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life, this life that we live right now, by one Jesus Christ. Man lost the authority. Man lost dominion over the earth. Man lost the dominion over this earth. Everybody point to this earth. Touch this earth right here. This is made out of earth. It's going to go back to dust. But one day it'll be resurrected. It'll be redeemed. We have to take authority over this earth. How many of you are beginning to realize that that's your biggest challenge is your own earth? Are you realizing that yet? Have you noticed you eat too much, you get fat? If you don't eat enough, you get weak? you got to take care of this earth. You have to take dominion over it. 
And if you haven't learned that, if you live long enough, you will find out that I'm telling you the truth. So we have to take a, a authority over this earth and reign. Now, God's given us the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to do that. Okay? Now, who is the God of this world? Satan is. Actually, when Adam sinned, he gave the lease to, uh, to, uh, to the devil. There was a 6,000-year lease. When you lease a place, you just, even though you may own it, you can't go in there and tell the people what to do. Satan stole the lease. 6,000 years. That's why God can't come back and take over the earth. Because it was leased to, to Adam for 6,000 years. Adam sold out to the devil. So the devil has a lease for 6,000 years. And then God himself, Christ himself, can come back and redeem this earth. So that's why... We've had to have 6,000 years like it is. But right now we're in the process of, of people's spirits being saved. Eventually our bodies will be uh, resurrected to glorified bodies. And one day this earth will be redeemed. And when you go back into the uh, New Testament and you see the millennium years, how this earth will be so beautiful. You think it's beautiful now, but when it's redeemed by the Lord, when he comes back, Animals will not devour one another. People will not devour one another. It'll be a, a very beautiful place because it's been redeemed by the Lord. The Lord comes back and takes possession of it, and we will rule and reign with Him. So keep that picture. Turn, if you will, to Psalms 115. Psalms 115. This is really a teaching. I need hours to teach it. Most of you know your Bible, so you'll f follow me pretty well. That's up on the board. Verse one, verse uh, 16, chapter 15, verse 16. All right. The heavens are the Lord's, amplified. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth has he given to the children of men. But the trouble is, the children of men lost it. When Adam sinned, he lost. And he could no more take dominion over the earth because Satan took dominion and had power. That's why Christ had to come. So redemption is more, just, more than just having our spirits saved. God has some purposes in redemption, believe me. So we see that. Now, I want you to turn to Luke 4, and this will verify it for you. Luke 4, verse 5. That's on the Amplified. I'll be up on the board. Luke 4, verse 5. Everybody there? I'll read it right off the board. Then the devil took him, that is Christ, up to the high mountains and showed him all the kingdoms of the Habitable, <clears throat> habitable world in a moment of, t of time in the twinkling of an eye. Go to the next verse, verse 7. And he said to him, To you I will give all this power and authority and their glory. Talk about all the kingdoms. And where did Satan get it? Ask yourself, where did Satan get it? Somebody tell me. From Adam. We got it? God didn't give it to him. No. God gave dominion, gave the earth to man. man. A man sold out to Satan, and so therefore the earth <clears throat> became basically the property of Satan. That's why the Bible calls him the God of this world. He stole it from Adam and Eve when they sinned in the garden. All right, let's finish reading that. Excellent uh, preeminence, dignity, and grace. For it has been what? Turn over to me, that is, over to the devil, and I give it to whomever I will. But Jesus said no. He was going to go God's way. He was going to bring forth God's plan, and he was going to redeem the earth God's way. And so that's where we are today. We're in that process 
of the spirit of men being redeemed. Our bodies will be redeemed in the near future, and this earth will be redeemed. And Christ can legally, listen, Christ, when the 6,000 years lease is up, then Christ can legally come back to this earth and claim the earth. Do you understand that when you lease something? You just, if you lease something for a year, even though you own it, you can't go in there and tell the people what to do, okay? Because it's a legal document, okay? Now when the year is up, then you can cause them people to leave your apartment that you leased to them for one year. Do you see the picture so far? I'm going slow. If you see the picture, raise your hand. Let me see your hands. That's good. Uh, the rest of you will catch up directly. All right. Let me finish reading. Uh, let, let, me, uh, let me go to uh, 1 Corinthians 2, okay? 1 Corinthians 2. See, there's some things that are a secret and even the devil didn't know it. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting with verse 6. Now Paul is talking. He says, yet when we are among the full-grown, spiritually mature Christians, that's why when a teacher or a pastor teaches people He's, he's got to try to teach it on the level of their maturity. There's some things you can't say to certain people because they are not spiritually mature enough to understand. And that's not to put them down. It's just that, that that is the stage of growth that they are in. And so Paul realized that, <clears throat> and, he, and he's, saying, uh, he's saying that here. He says, let me read that again. Yet when we are among the full-grown spiritually mature Christians who are ripe in understanding and do, not in, and, and do impart a higher wisdom and knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. You know, if we brought out the full plan of God to most people or Christians, they could not understand it because it was hidden and they don't have the understanding or the, their knowledge has not been developed at this point to understand the mysteries that are in the Bible. There's many mysteries in the Bible, and you can never understand it until the revelation of God comes forth. But he goes on and says, Of the divine plan previously hidden, but it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age. See, there's a wisdom of this present age which comes from the enemy. It doesn't come from God. The God of this world, you might as well realize right now, we fight principalities and powers. This earth, the, 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 the authority that Adam got, the, the dominion that Adam and Eve got was stolen from them. They surrendered it to Satan when they sinned in the garden. And Christ came back to redeem that which was lost, that which was surrendered to Satan in the garden. And so we're in that process now seeing this unfold. But it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age. They don't understand it. They cannot understand it because they do not have the Holy Spirit. And they have not been born again. You can talk to them to your blue in the face. They cannot understand. Who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. Verse 7, But rather we, what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God, once hidden from the human understanding, and now revealed to us by God, that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages of, uh, for our glorification to lift us into the glory of His presence. Look at verse 8. Very important scripture. Notice this. None of the rulers of this age or world perceived and recognized and understood this. For if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. In other words, when they crucified, that is the powers of darkness, the rulers 
of, of, the, of the present age, when Christ was on the earth, which they were controlled by demonic powers, if they had known that they were signing their own death warrant when they crucified the Son of God, they would never have crucified him. Because they signed their death warrant. Now we've got to go into the scriptures and let the scriptures explain that to us, and that's what I'm trying to do here now. Okay. Let's turn to Hebrews 2 real quick. Over to Hebrews 2. Follow me now. Don't get off on some sidetrack. Pay attention to the teacher. Hebrews 2, 14. Who knows? You might learn something. Amen. Everybody there? Hebrews 2, 14 is up on the board. Since therefore these, his children, share in flesh and blood, in the physical nature of human beings, he himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature that by going through death he might bring to naught and make of no effect him, that is Satan, who had the power of death, that is the devil. And so Satan had the power to rule on this earth. He had the power of death. And when Christ was crucified on that cross, then Satan lost that power of death. In other words, death will not be the final word for those who put their faith and trust in the Lord. So Satan has been defeated, but that 6,000 years lease, and we're at all, we are at just about there. That's why the Lord can come back. Very important that you understand that. See, God, God, you say, well, God's God. He can do what he wants to do. No, he doesn't. He has to operate within his own laws. He expects you to keep his laws. Don't you think he's going to keep them? Yeah, you know that. So he just can't do anything he wants to. He set this thing in motion. Adam, I'm giving you authority over the earth. The earth is yours. We saw that in Psalms 115. It's yours. Now, the whole intention of God was that Adam and Eve and God, as partners, would rule on the earth and bring forth the perfect plan and will of God. But Satan sold out, betrayed God. And when he did, he lost, he lost the authority and power that he had over the earth. And Satan became what? The God of this world. Who has, by the way, blinded the unbeliever from the glorious light of the gospel. That's how much power Satan has. Does he have more power than God? No, no. But he's got power to blind the unbelievers from the glorious light of the gospel. You know why you're here this morning? Because the Holy Spirit got on your, let me speak good words here, uh, sniffed you out, so to speak. He's the hound from heaven and called you and worked in your heart and showed you the light of uh, the power of the gospel, and you're saved because of his grace, his mercy, because you were running from him as hard as you could. And some of you may still be running, but I got news for you. You might as well give up. Now, you can go on. You can go on your merry way, and I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to get into a lot of trouble. There's over a million people in jail in the United States of America because they say, God, I don't need you. I don't want you. I'll do what I want to do. And they did what they wanted to do. And how many of you know they are where? In jail. And my heart goes out. See, it's reality. We deal with reality. This is not a powder puff thing that we're talking about. We're talking about reality. God's got a plan. And he's called all of us to fit into that plan. And right now he's in the process of bringing as many people back to himself. And that's why we're here as a church, to do his will. And then one day these bodies will be redeemed and this earth will be redeemed. 
and how beautiful that's going to be. <clears throat> go back over, if you will. Go back to Genesis 9. Go back to Genesis 9 now. All the way back in the Old Testament, Genesis 9. In fact, that's the first book of the Bible. Genesis 9. <clears throat> Verse 6, everybody there? It's on the board. Genesis 9, 6. Whoever sheds a man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God he made man. So if you kill somebody, spill their blood, then the law will take you, put you in jail, you go through your trial, you're guilty, the man has the right to spill your blood because you spilt a man's blood or a woman's blood who was created in the image of God. We understand that. If you don't understand it, put it on your shelf. But that's important because I say this, notice this. If the rulers of this world would have known they would not have crucified Jesus Christ, because they killed an innocent man, and that innocent man was Jesus Christ. They spilled innocent blood, so God has every right now to deal with Satan and his host of demons, legally, not unrighteously. Satan, you spilled the blood of an innocent man, my son. See, if, you, if you'd have known my word, you wouldn't have done it because you now legally and righteously I can arrest you and put you in the bottomless pit. See, God has to do according to his own laws. He just can't do whatever he wants to do. No, he operates within his laws. How many understand that? Well, I, will, I, I, I believe I'm talking to mature Christians here this morning to that point. So, whoever sheds man's blood, whoever, that Satan, demonic powers, man, then by man shall his blood be shed in the, because man has been made in the image of God. So as we see things unfold, you have a lot of legal aspects to salvation. And God has to work within those laws to bring about His holy will. Okay? All right. Turn to 1 John 3, 8. King James. Put the King James up there. 1 John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Wow. Powerful. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose. What purpose? Why did Christ come? The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, when we receive Christ, we stop practicing sin. Doesn't mean that we can't sin. We can sin, we can be tempted, and we can give in to that temptation, and we can sin, but God has made a way that if we do, then we know that God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God for that. But remember this, many sins carry a bad circumstance or a bad consequence. Do we understand that? I want to say that again. Certain sins bring forth, even though God forgives us, we have created a circumstance that we have to live with until we get our glorified bodies. I'll give you an example. Let's just say somebody goes out and continually committing adultery or fornication. They're having fun for a while, but all of a sudden they catch a disease, like herpes. Anybody know what herpes is? Once you get it, you live with it. And, you, and you have, if you have sexual relationships with other 
uh, people, if you're a woman, another man, vice versa, you just pass it on down the line. Like Adam's sin was passed down the line, you'll pass that herpes down. Right on down the line. See, see did God forgive you? Yes. You're forgiven. But you've got to live with your, the result of your sin. Young people, you need to understand what I'm talking about. You can be rebellious if you want to, and I'm not picking on you. I love you. But I can tell you what's going to happen to you in your life. One million people were rebellious. They stole, they commit bad sins, and they're in jail today. One, maybe it's over a million, a million people in jail today. Is, is that what you want your future to be? Go ahead out there and break God's laws. Have fun for a season. That's what the Bible says. But afterwards, what? I know people are not used to truth, but I got to get it. I got to, you know, we got to get down. Folks, I'm telling you, we got to get, understand some things here. We have a will, and God will not dominate and control. He says, come unto me. You got a will to come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. So there's a price. Yes, God forgives. He's a merciful God. And I could give you examples in the Bible. King David. King David was forgiven. And if you read about his family, horrible things happened to his family because of that one sin. This is a good message in it. You like it, don't you? But you're learning something. You're learning something. God's not a party pooper. Sin is fun for a season, but after that season, can I share my heart? No, don't share your heart, Bob. Please, please let me share it. Have you looked at TV? Football. I love football. Would you run and catch this pass? I love football. Then they always show these pretty girls kicking up their legs. And then you have this nice bottle of Budweiser. See, the, see, drink Budweiser, that way you get wise. See, I know there's no stones in here because I searched the building out already before I was going to preach this. But isn't that true? They magnify sin. They don't never have, not there's any ugly girls, I'm not going to step on no feet, but... They don't never show an ugly girl in a bathing suit. I imagine that really bothers some folk. I'm, I'm preaching truth. But they glamour time, but they never show the alcoholic that's in the millions. They never show the alcoholic. But I've seen the alcoholic. I've sat in my office with alcoholics. I haven't sat in my office with people that, that have messed around in their marriage and now they got a disease and can I take him or her back now? And if I do, what, what kind of life is this? That's why the Bible says, Romans 5, 17, what? God's given us what? The abundance, abundance, everybody say abundance. Abundance of grace and what? Somebody help me out. Don't forget it, didn't you? Abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that we might reign in this life through Christ Jesus, my Lord. Bob, are you standing up there and saying you're perfect? No, I'm probably the most unperfect person in this. But I thank God... By God's grace, I did not make some of the mistakes that people have, are making today, and I ha have to deal with them. And somehow, how do you put their lives back together? God, I don't know. I love them. You love them. The God of this world has deceived them to make them think that sin is so glamorous. This young girl got tired of going to church. 
she met this young man. And he took her into the city. All the lights were fine. They were going around to different places and doing their one, two, threes and whatever else they do. And the further they got into the city, it seemed to get darker. I know some of you don't like this, but I love you. I got to tell you the truth. And you can stone me if you want. I got a place right out there. You can put this old body. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Because my heart's broken. My heart's broken to see people so seduced by the enemy, so deceived by Satan, that they think they can break God's laws and nothing is going to happen. I know this is not a fuzzy, fuzzy sermon, and we'll get one maybe Wednesday night or somewhere down the line. But i got to get this off my heart. Because if I don't, your blood will be... See, i got to warn people. God has given us the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to take charge, take dominion over the devil. He's given us power over all the powers of the enemy, and we don't have to let him run shotgun over us anymore. Amen. Now, you can, but I'll tell you what. You'll be in my office back there, or you'll be somewhere, or you'll be in jail. Now, the good news is God has a wonderful plan. And as we open it up into the Word of God, He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. How many in here have, have learned that running through stop signs is dangerous? Let me see your hands. Hey, you're learning. Why don't you run through stop signs? Boy, I need to get my mic out there and find out why. Yeah. Why, why don't you? Huh? You've learned something, haven't you? Yeah. How many in here have learned not to stick your hand in the fire? Hmm? How many here has learned not to take a gun and point it at somebody and pull the trigger? You're learning. How many here have learned not to sin? How many in here, like David, I went astray before I was afflicted, but since I've been afflicted, what? I don't go astray no more. How many learned that way? <laughs> Come on, church. We love you. Loosen up. Don't pick up condemnation, therefore there is no condemnation. Let's learn and be able to rule and reign in the power of the Holy Spirit in this whole world. The devil is not going to kill God's people anymore. Put something in your bosom and say, Devil, you were whipped at Calvary for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. you got to get mad at the devil. Some of you are not mad at the devil. You're still courting him. Stop it! I'm going to get out there where you can hear me. You know I love you. I talk to my girls like this. You know why? You know why? Because I love them. You should know the truth. And the truth will set you free. That's right, Bob. Preach it. All right, you heard that. My heart bleeds. I bared them too many times. I bared them. We had one guy. I sat down and I, I talked to him like a father to a son. He was about 40 years old. He never had anybody talk to him like this. Nobody told me what you're telling me. But he was already an alcoholic. He was already a drug addict. I said, listen, you, gotta, you mix that stuff together, those drugs and that alcohol, I got I to gotta, I gotta tell you, 
I got to be a voice in the wilderness. You will die. The devil will set you up. The devil will set you up. And he started coming to Sunday school. Boy, he was learning, casting down those imaginations, becoming obedient. One time, the devil tempted him. He got weak. He got a hold of some more drugs. He got the alcohol. Drugs, alcohol. They found him in the bathroom on the floor, dead. Bob, did you hear about? No, what happened? Now, brother, when somebody dies on my shift, I don't like it. The devil, Jesus said, listen, the devil has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Jesus don't lie. Did I hear you right? That the devil can actually kill, steal, and destroy? But I love Jesus so much, I have him in my heart. You stick your hand in the hot stove, I'll tell you, you're going to get burnt. You can love Jesus more than all of us in this place, but you stick your hand in that fire, you're going to get burnt. So we buried him. Well, that's just one situation. Oh, no, I've got many, many stories to tell you. Bob, we got a friend up at the Navy Hospital. See, nobody taught him how to rule and reign and to say no to all ungodliness. Titus chapter 2, verse 11, say no to all ungodliness. Is it evil? Run. Does it have an appearance of evil? Peter said, run. Here's what happens. I went up there and I talked with him. He's getting all these voices. You're no good. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. I sat down and talked with him. I said, those voices that you are hearing... It's not, your, it's not your voice. It's not God's voice. Let me tell you, without any doubt in my mind, it's Satan telling you, listen, to kill yourself because you are created in the image of God. See, Satan is after the image of God. He can't get to God, but he'll get to the image of God, and he's doing that every day, 24-7. You read your newspaper, watch your news, that's what's happening. Well, I'm not fussing, but this thing is in me, and I am concerned for the people of God. That we think we can, many people think they can ignore what God has said. He's God. He knows. He's not a party pooper. Why did he tell Titus to write down, say no to all ungodliness? Because he loves us. How many parents do we have? Uh, go out and lay in the road and let the 18-wheeler run over you. They probably wouldn't get offended if you told them that. But you say, now, don't get out there in the road now and get run over by 18-wheeler. And they go, I'll show you. <laughs> Ain't no 18-wheeler going to run over me. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> Mom was right. Bob was right. Oh, why didn't I listen? Too late now. Your guts are all over the road. <laughs> this thing, this is going, to web, going on the website. <laughs> See, I'm free. I fear God more than do man. Amen. My bragging, not complaining. I've done seen too many... Homes destroyed. I'm so unhappy. Why are you unhappy? Well, I only get three meals a day. I have two cell phones. I have one in my car. I have soap. I have hot water. I have a house to live in. I have a husband that works. 
I've got air conditioning. I've got a heater when it gets cold. I've got a bed to sleep in. I've got feet to put my shoes on. What I'm so unhappy. Love me. What is that called? Complaining and murmuring. Complaining and murmuring. I'm tired of this fried chicken, mashed potatoes and butter beans and okra and hot biscuits and iced tea. Come on, church, love me. I'm speaking truth. I don't care if you stone me. Go ahead. I'm preaching now. I'm preaching because I love you. I say that how many times I've had couples sit in the office. I'm so unhappy. Unhappy. I make the list. House to live in. Got money in your pocket. Money in the bank. A boat in the garage. A car in the garage. A motorcycle. A motor scooter. A bicycle. A tricycle. <laughs> clothes in a closet. You can't get another tie on the rack. I'm not looking at nobody, but I'm looking. And they're unhappy. Can I help you? Just realize that you are blessed. You are to be envied. You are fortunate. If your sins have been forgiven and they're not counted against you anymore, you are a blessed, happy person. Happy is the man that God does not impute their sins against them. We are free, free to praise God. Satan, we will not serve you no more. We tell you right now, we have power over you. Jesus Christ beat you at Calvary. And we take that power has been given to us, and we will not yield to that power any longer. Those suggestions in your mind, kill yourself. You're no good. You're just a bum in the slum. No, you're not. You're a child of God. He tears the image. He's trying to tear the image of God down in your mind. You've been created in the image of God. And if the devil can tear that down in your mind, let me tell you something. You'll be so unhappy person in the world going around moaning and a groaning, not realizing the blessings you got. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He's not going to be God of this world very long. He's going to be cast into the bottomless pit. And a man's going to do it. Christ Jesus, our Lord. But right now, we've got a battle to fight. If you don't know how to pray, pray. come down here. Frank will teach you how to pray. Absolutely. Just follow his pattern. I saw this morning Satan fall like lightning when Frank was praying. And then he got in on it, and the rest of the demons left. We have power, but you got to use that power. You got to speak that power. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We just can't sit there and let the devil ride shotgun on us over no more. Can't do it. We got to fight. That's why Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to let you go early. And all of God's people said? Amen. <laughs> I'm just speaking truth. I'm just a mouthpiece. What you got, Scott? What did he say? His wife graduated from college, and he has a cake in the back. Oh, wonderful. Eat cake, but sin not. <laughs> I love you. And if I had somebody years ago would have 
just sit down and talk to me like this and let me know, I would have escaped a lot of problems myself, you know? And if you take in heart what I've said this morning, say, God, help me to walk in this spirit. Because the Bible says, walk in this spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And let me tell you, the lust of the flesh breaks out many different ways. I was a very a moody person at one time, not realizing by being moody, I was, I was yielding to Satan. Say, so you've got to get control over your mind, yourself. Every thought you have in your mind is, doesn't originate from you. And some of those thoughts are, look pretty good, too. You know that. You have to cast it down. And you can. God is with us. He's challenging his people to take the land this morning. Take the land this week. Throw the devil out. Tell him to go. Be happy. Be content. Thank God for what God has done for you. Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody. Look at somebody and say, I'm happy. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Father, I want to thank you now that anybody here that does not know the Lord, has not committed their life to Christ, would come forward and talk to us. And Lord, we thank you now for the cake, and we give you honor and glory for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And